Hey guys, this is Yoda. This will be my Outlaw Rogue Guide for Season 4, Dragonflight, Mythic Plus. Uh, in this guide, we'll go over the stats and items you will probably want to go for, talent build, which we'll briefly mention, uh, and then we'll talk about the rotation. First off, for the stats, primary two that you're going for are crit and verse. These are going to be by far your best stats in AoE, uh, and they're also really good single target. On single target, haste gets a little bit more value, um, but for your overall threat, the dungeon crit and verse are going to be stronger. The main reason for this is that in AoE, you have access to blade flurry and the talent death maneuvers, which is an extremely low energy cost way to fill your combo point bar. Whereas on single target, you don't have access to that, so you're kind of just swinging away with Sinister Strike, which is very energy costly. Um, so yeah, on single target, haste is a pretty good stat for the rest, verse and crit. What that really means for your Mythic Plus gearing is that your haste is probably going to want, you're probably going to want like one or two pieces with haste, just so your single target isn't completely bad. The rest you're going to want crit and verse and try to dodge as much mastery as possible. Um, our tier set is... While it's a season three bonus, it's using the season two items. So the items actually, there's only one crit verse item, which is gloves. So definitely wear those. And you kind of have to make some sacrifices. Ideally, I think you're going to play with the helm, shoulders, and chest, and then swap out the legs for either crafted legs or 528 of, a, of dungeon legs from the vault. There's no actual good dungeon legs. Or there's no good legs from the raid. So you'll probably end up wearing either crafted, just wear the tier set anyway, uh, even though it's high mastery, or you can wear a 528 one that you find in your vault from dungeons. Uh, for your trinkets, most likely you're gonna want Storm Eater's Boon and hopefully Incarnate Icon. Uh, Icon did just get nerfed uh, as the day that I made this video. So there's a possibility that you don't play Icon and instead you play Ominous Chromatic Essence. Uh, if you play Chromatic Essence, make sure it's on Verse or Crit. If you can't play Verse or Crit on Chromatic Essence, then it's just not worth it for you to play it because the other stats are still behind. Um, so it's either Icon or Chromatic Essence. And then the other trinket, Storm Eater's Boon, did just get nerfed by 25%, but I'm pretty sure it's still the best trinket for dungeons keep in mind that it does root you so you are going to be vulnerable you can potentially die or grief mechanics when this is up so make sure you're not going to die one good thing you can do to make sure you don't die in storm Eater's boon is make sure evasion's up make sure cloak is up and then while cloak doesn't last the whole duration like evasion you can kind of like wait for a story to spawn under you cloak and then hopefully another one doesn't spawn with the rest of the duration you can also shadow step to get out of it let's say you use it here and then your tank runs away you can just shadow step boom you cannot hook but you can shadow step evasion and cloak if you don't want to play boon then your other good options are controlled current technique this kind of makes your rotation play really smooth because it increases your attack speed but overall on sim i think it's probably not as good as some other options there's dragonfire bomb dispenser and grief torch grief torch just got buffed and bomb dispenser just got nerfed so i think all of those options are pretty gonna be, gonna be pretty close grief torch could be good uh, if you need burst single target like uh, on certain totem bosses like Dragonite hollow or old man uh grief torch could be good but like i said i still will prefer the storm Eater spoon or controlled current technique uh you can even potentially just play both if you don't need a stat stick trinket like if your group's not fully synergized or whatever, you can just use both. Um, so yeah, those are your trinkets. For your rings, you're definitely going to want to use the Seal of Dyrin as chosen. This has the correct stats, is not under budgeted in exchange for the damage proc. And the damage proc, you know, Rogue doesn't really proc it that often. You have Shadow Flame, you have your Helm Enchant, and potentially you have Dragon Fire Bomb. And you potentially have Raid Chart if you're playing that, which I don't recommend for Season 4. Your trinkets are actually good now. Um, but yeah, the procs is not going to be as many as like a Demon Hunter would. But at the same time, you know, it's free, so just wear it. And you have bullion, so it's no reason not to take it. For your other ring, you can either use a crafted ring, or you can take the signet of the last elder from Agira. Just has low verse, high crit. The crafted ring, you just play crit verse. Um, for your embellishments, you're probably going to want Shadow Flame to proc your fire ring. You can potentially play the Flame Helm embellishment uh, over Shadow Flame. I think it's kind of a wash. The Flame Helm embellishment is haste mastery though, so the stats are really bad. So I kind of just prefer Shadow Flame. Doesn't really matter. Embellishments are pretty weak nowadays, so just play whatever you want. I'm going to play double Shadow Flame if that makes a difference to you. Um, for your embellishment, you're going to want to put it on your cape since your embellishment is low, lower eye level by default. And then the other one is going to be either on belts or boots. I have them on boots because there's a belt from a gear that's reverse. So you just wear the belt from a gear and then you wear crafted boots. The other crafted item I would recommend is NG Bracers with Battle Res. Uh, Rogue doesn't naturally have a Battle Res. In my opinion, it's very important for every player to be able to Battle Res just to make sure disasters don't happen or they happen at a lower rate. Uh, most of the time, like three eye levels on an item is not going to make or break your dungeon, but having a B Res might. So 
I always play that. For your neck, you're gonna want Ouroboreal Necklet from Volcaros. Uh, you can also buy with Bullions, it's just high versus low crit. The extra effect is very weak. I wouldn't count on it for honestly anything, but the high versus low neck crit is very good, so you might as well buy it, it's free. Or that's not free, but we have a lot of Bullions. For your weapons, uh, you're gonna want Thorn Collar Claw in the main hand, even more stat bloated in season four than season three. So this is gonna be like even better than before. And I was already wearing every dungeon. Um, the effect is really strong. Yeah, there's just no reason not to wear this. It can potentially break CC in very, very weird situations. If a mob dies and your Thorn Spirit is on it, it can spread if like the CC mob is the only mob in combat, which happened in season three in Wakerest Manor sometimes, but that's pretty much the only place. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, just play Thorn Collar Claw and don't think about it too much. For your offhand, uh, I believe Cruel Dream Carver is gonna end up being the best. There is the option to play Nick of Time from the M0 Dawn. It'll be champion track, so lower eye level than this season. But in my opinion, the Cruel Dream Carver is probably better. DPS wise, it might be very, very close, but the extra effect from Cruel Dream Carver, I think makes it more worse. Um, you're gonna want the one that gives you 10% leech while below 50% health that comes from animals uh I, obviously every animal is categorized in a weird way but there's a bunch of them in veldraken or not in veldraken in this area of the map which is called Theldrassus. uh and just everywhere that you can use the stagger on that'll give you 10 percent leech well below 50 percent very strong in rot fights you pretty much are immune to death in those done in those fights while you have this and elusiveness uh so those are the items Uh, speaking of elusiveness, we'll now go to the talents. So the right side is pretty much locked in if you're playing Keep It Rolling. I will always play Keep It Rolling in every dungeon while we have this tier set. It sims about 4% higher than Hidden Opportunity. Mostly considered a little bit harder to play and definitely more punishing, especially if you die. But in my opinion, the extra output is worth it. It's like 4% lower on sim, but anytime you pull like an AoE pack, it is going to be massively stronger. And all there's also cheese at the start of the dungeon that makes you very strong on the first pull. So I always play Keep It Rolling. If you want, you can play Hidden Opportunity. Not saying, you know, you'll be shunned from groups or whatever if you don't play it, but you will probably do less damage. So keep that in mind. Uh, key talents on the right side are Underhanded Upper Hand. This basically makes it so while you're stealth or in a stealth window, your AR doesn't tick down. And then while your AR is active, your Blade Flurry doesn't tick down. While your Blade Flurry is active, or while your SD is active, while your Blade Flurry is active, your SD doesn't tick down. So all your buffs are like being kept up by their other buffs. Um, and then keep it rolling itself. And Crack Shot basically makes it so that. You want to be using your stealth windows as much as possible and spamming between the eyes in those stealth windows as much as you can. On the left side, uh, these talents are pretty much set for keep it rolling. You have one flex point with iron. I have it in iron stomach right now, but you can also put it in shiv or improved wound poison. Improved wound poison would be for sanguine or if you think mobs are going to heal, you can use it there. Uh, shiv is to dispel rages. You can also play graceful guile. I haven't found a situation in season four where I needed it, but uh, this talent can be good if you need a faint twice in a row. We do have float like a butterfly, so your faint cooldown is very, very low um, by default, but sometimes you need to use it twice in a row. Graceful guile can be used. Uh, still shroud can also be swapped out for graceful guile, but usually I don't do that because if you're playing rogue, sometimes people are like, oh wow, we're playing with rogue, we can shroud. And then three minutes later, like, oh wow, we have a rogue, we can shroud. And if you don't have shroud, it's, it's weird. So personally, I just always play still shroud. Um, in terms of elusiveness versus cheat death, in my opinion, in low keys, cheat death is actually better because in low keys, you're probably not going to die unless you really messed up, especially like with Boon. So cheat death can give you a nice buffer against that. Whereas with elusiveness, if you play perfectly, you're gonna take less damage with elusiveness, but there's less room for mistakes because you don't have a cheat death. So uh, in high keys, you actually need elusiveness to survive certain one shots. So definitely play that in higher keys, but in low keys, I think, you know, if you're not getting one shot, then cheat death is probably good because that means that most of your deaths are gonna come from errors, not from like, because the, the key is too hard. So, cheat death is good, basically, if the key is easy. Elusiveness if the key is hard. So that's talents. Uh, we went over items already. And next, we're going to go over the rotation. All right, so now we're going to talk about the Outlaw Rogue rotation for Season 4 Dragonflight. We're going to go into a few sections. So the first section is going to talk about roll the bones and keep it rolling, like how you're going to maintain those buffs. The second thing you have to juggle is going to be your other buffs, such as Blade Flurry, Slice and Dice, and Adrenaline Rush. Then the third part, we'll talk about uh, combo point generation and spending, so like what priority you want to be using your skills in. Then we'll talk about your crack shot windows, which is your stealth windows with from Vanish and from Shadow Dance. All right, so the first thing we're talking about is roll the bones. Basically, it's this ability. It has a 45 second cooldown, but it's reduced by restless blades. You push it and you get a buff at random. The best one you want is broadside, which 
makes your combo point generators give you one extra. Second best one is one we just got, True Bearing. It makes your cooldown reduction from Restless Blades count double. Um, your goals with the Roll of Bones, since we have this tier set, it basically means you get one extra roll every time you roll, and one of those is the one you currently have. So if you only have one buff, next time I roll the Bones, it's going to be two buffs at least, and one of them will be True Bearing. So you want to hopefully set up a situation where one of your buffs is Broadside, and then you roll again and you get Broadside. So that's your number one goal, is actually to have high Broadside uptime. So your second goal is to maintain three buffs. You can't always do this, like sometimes you have dry periods and then you don't have a loaded dice up in time for your next roll the bones force force roll the bones cast but ideally you just have you have a loaded dice proc for every single time you have to push roll the bones then if you roll the bones and you have three buffs and you have loaded dice then it should give you three buffs again because your tier set when you're when i said you're forced to roll the bones that basically means if roll the bones is about to fall off then you want to roll no matter what so for instance right now we have two buffs if we roll again, then it'll be at least two buffs, with it, even without loaded dice. But if we let them fall off, then roll, we could end up with one or two, right? You want to be rolling the bones, basically, as it's about to fall off. Then we'll get it, now we'll get into keep it rolling. So the reason we play keep it rolling is because it allows us for high up time on like a large number of buffs. So remember I said, usually if you're just chilling, you're going to have three buffs. Like, you know, a normal situation, you have AR into loaded dice with at least one buff. Boom, you roll the bones, you have three buffs. You keep playing for a bit and then, you know, look. Before you roll the bones falls off, you get AR back and you AR roll the bones again from the other dice and you have three buffs again, right? So that's the normal loop. The way you keep it rolling changes that up is you rely on count the odds. So with count the odds, sometimes when you use like one of your skills, you have a chance to get a random roll. So if you have three buffs and then you get a count the odds proc, or if you have two and you get two procs, luckily, uh, then you'll be at four buffs. You want to use count the odds whenever you have four buffs, any four buffs, you just insta push the button. If obviously if you're like about to go up on an elevator, then probably don't push it. But uh, anytime you have four buffs, you can push it. If you like, you can wait for that count the odds to like almost fall off and then roll the bones to potentially fish for a fifth buff. Um, that is optional. Both playstyles are like roughly equal on sim. So it's all that one's up to you. Um, but anyway, there's one more thing with keep it rolling. You want to get four buffs, then keep it rolling. After you keep it rolling, those four buffs are actually like kind of frozen. So the next time you roll the bones, ideally with loaded dice, you cannot roll off any of the buffs. So you could potentially get five or six buffs. Once you do that, that's basically your main goal accomplished. You have five or six buffs that are super long because like most of them are from keep it rolling. One little caveat to that, don't use AR roll of bones, like loaded dice roll of bones, if your buffs have 39 or more seconds. Once you hit 39, you can roll. But if you roll higher than 39, then it can override them. All right, so that's roll the bones. I know it's a lot but that's and that's only one thing you have to juggle so the next thing you have to juggle is maintaining your other buffs blade flurry adrenaline rush and slice and dice we have this talent underhanded upper hand which was new in season three basically your buffs make it so that your other buffs stay on so ideally in a key hopefully you can just have your first blade flurry ar slice and dice and you just keep these forever hopefully right you notice how i'm in stealth my ar blade flurry and slice and dice are all not counting down that's from underhanded upper hand so the game basically when you're doing your rotation is to try and get enough stealth windows before this AR falls off, like delaying this AR falling off until your next AR comes back. Obviously, you can't always do that, um, especially like if you have downtime. But if you play perfectly like a robot, I think on AOE, the sim has like 97 or something percent adrenaline rush up time. Realistically, like a really good rogue in a key will probably have like 90% plus, maybe even 95 if they're like literally the best rogue ever. Um, but yeah, that's that's mainly your goal is to keep as high, super high AR up time. And if you are like playing the game, basically, and you never die, then Blade Flurry and Slice and Dice should basically just maintain themselves with underhanded upper hand but please note if air falls down then you may need to push blade flurry manually especially on single targets since you're not reflect uh refreshing with death maneuvers speaking of death maneuvers the next thing we're going to talk about is generating and spending combo points so you have your most basic generator which is sinister strike but sinister strike costs a lot of energy it costs 45 energy we only got 150 in ar and we have 100 outside ar so you don't want to be using this you only want to use this if you have nothing else so what counts as something else your highest priority is actually blade flurry on aoe with deft maneuvers i think it's like three plus targets that you want to be using blade flurry to generate combo points it costs only 15 energy compared to sinister strikes 45 and it pretty much always in aoe will get put you at like an amount of combo points where you can already spend so it's like one button to basically like you know make your next finisher usable your second priority is going to be echoing reprimand this costs 10 energy so it's a very low energy cost and it awards two combo points so if you have literally zero combo points you can't insta finish after this but in any other scenario you can like if you have one combo point and then you use echoing reprimand It'll put you at three or four or maybe five, depending, like on uh, certain procs. 
and then it always charges up your second, third, and or your sorry, your third, fourth, and fifth combo point. So almost every time after you use Ekron Reformand, you can spend insta. So that's your next uh, highest priority since it like basically quote unquote fills your combo points, gives you two more enemy charge combo points, and only costs 10 energy. So after those two, your next priority is gonna be pistol shot with fan the hammer procs. When you sinister strike, sometimes you'll have a chance to proc it. So here, I'm just gonna hit the dummy a few times. Okay, I got it on the first proc. Sometimes your sinister strike like is free and then it gives you a free pistol shot. This gives you three pistol shot charges. You just use pistol shot, it spends them all and it pretty much fills your combo points up. Sometimes you won't be like fully full if you have like really bad buffs slash RNG. It'll only get you like half full and you just sinister after, but that's fine. Then your last priority is sinister. Um, for spending, you want to spend at 5 plus in crackshot windows and 6 plus outside. Sometimes I'll spend at 5 outside if I have broadsides, but pending whether or not that's actually a good thing. The, the general rule is 5 during crackshot windows and 6 plus outside. Uh, speaking of crackshot windows, that'll be the next topic. So for finishers, you generally just want to finish with dispatch. If you don't have slice and dice, then, you know, put that up. Inside crackshot windows, you want to be finishing with between the eyes because of all the reasons we mentioned. Uh, crackshot basically makes your between the eyes automatically do a dispatch for 100 percent And then you have all these other talents called especially uh, improved between the eyes, which makes your crit, crit BTEs hit super hard. And also you have ace up your sleeve. So this allows, causes your between the eyes to have a chance to reset. If you use a seven pointer, then like as a 35% chance to generate five combo points. And then you also have a uh, broadside sometimes with so six combo points, it's crazy. If you're in crack shot and you get an ace proc, basically you can instantly use between the eyes again. So yeah, we're spending on dispatch and then in crack shot, we're spending on between the eyes. Technically uh, outside of your crack shot windows, you should try to sneak in one between the eyes, between vanishes if possible. Never, you never want to delay a crack shot window because between the eyes is on cooldown. So, like, if you're, you do, the general rule is that if Shadow Dance is up in less, in more than 15 seconds, and if Vanish is up in more than 40, then you can use one between the eyes. However, if the pack is dying, then you don't want to do that because then you're gonna, you're gonna get a resell. And then if you're between the eyes is on cooldown at the start of the next pack, that's really bad. So, if you're just starting out as Outlaw Rogue, you don't need to worry about that. I would just, between the eyes only in crack shot windows and then dispatch outside. As you get more experience, you can start trying to work them in. If you never work it into your rotation, I think it's like three-ish percent DPS loss. So it's like not the end of the world, but you know, you, you do want to be getting those in if possible. All right, so that's all of the basic concepts. Uh, now I'll just do like a short little dummy test. Uh, I'll probably hit the dummy for like five minutes probably make some errors and point them out and then you guys can see exactly what I do. So we're gonna start with roll the bones. Uh, if you're just starting the key, there's a little cheese you can do at the beginning of the key. You wanna get a pull 25, then push AR, roll the bones, keep it rolling, blade flurry stealth. That makes your first two rolls, uh, keep it rolling rolls and then keep it rolling resets in the key. So you can like AR load a dice and roll the bones instantly. Hopefully that, that can potentially put you at four buffs and you can just like keep it rolling first global. There's a more detailed explanation on that. There should be a link below the video. But if you're just starting with nothing, then it's gonna look like just roll the bones, AR, slice and dice, uh, blade flurry slice and dice before the keys before like combat and then we'll slice and dice here just because you normally start with zero. Then you walk up to the pack and we'll just start. Oh, you have Ghosty Strike. I have Ghosty Strike, Mercury, and a Blade Flurry. You don't have to do that. That's just kind of like a weird thing I do. Otherwise, you just want to be Ghosty Striking off cooldown on your main target. So here we go. And some procs here. Okay, first stealth one is over. We roll the bones. We have our stock three buffs. I'm not going to use any trinkets or pots. This is uh, mostly just about outlaw. Outlaw specific stuff. So you can see my AR is back already. Spend on Echoing Reprimand points there. Since we have Broadside, I'm not really itching to use this loaded dice. We got four buffs, we're gonna keep it rolling. We get a sneak in a BT there. Now we're just dispatching until crack shots up. And now we're in our crack shot window. We can roll the bones since we most recently kept it rolling. Now we have our six buffs. This is like the goal. This is where you wanna be after keep it rolling. AR to refill combo points there in stealth window. Finger from Randolph cooldown. We're not using BTE because Crack Vanish will be up soon. Okay, so my rolls are falling off soon. I'm gonna roll. Alright, we got three buffs and one of them is broadside, so that's good. AR fell off, but we can re-AR. We're gonna prioritize Vanish over Shadow Dance here. 
build back up to five, and then Shadow Dance. You want to start every stealth window at max combo points if possible. Sometimes you can use a finish, use a stealth window early to extend Adrenaline Rush. That's kind of like personal preference. We actually messed up here. If you notice, our BT's not up and our vanishes, so shouldn't have used that last one. Keep it rolling on four buffs. I don't know why I used that AR there. That was a little bit troll. So we're going to wait for these buffs to hit 39, and then we're going to roll the bones again. Not using BTE here. Buffs are at 39, so we roll. Six buffs again. Very epic. We have all the buffs, so I am going to spend the BTE here. It's because I'm pretty sure I'll get my BTE back in time. I do. In fact, I'm even going to vanish first before the Shadow Dance. It's Insta. Alright, and then my vanish is almost back. I'm going to roll beforehand because my rolls were falling off. Alright. That's it, you kind of get the picture. Hopefully on AoE, your AR, your AR pretty much like never falls off. Um, so yeah, that was a quick little dummy test. If you guys have more questions about Outlaw, be sure to catch me on stream. I usually answer Outlaw questions there. And the Ravenholtz Discord is also really, really good about answering Outlaw questions. It's a great resource. I just totally recommend checking it out. Um, that's it. Thank you all for watching.